What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. Very, very excited to drop episode one, our first new realistic rebuild here on the channel in Madden 21. Hopefully it is going to be like a rebuild you've never seen before because that's kind of what I'm going for. And you might be confused like, whoa, why are we already at week 10? Why is it Detroit? Well, I dropped a video last night explaining that I was ending our main Madden 21 franchise with the Detroit Lions and that is no fault of the Detroit Lions. That is no fault of YouTube performance or anything in between. Ultimately, I decided to end it because these new rebuilds are essentially all going to be like 32 mini main channel franchises is kind of the way to think about it. And just continuing just to have a Detroit Lions franchise just going on the side, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Because like when you think about it, how far would we have probably got with the Detroit Lions? Like three, four years probably? And then it would have been time to either win a Super Bowl or we would have been moving on to another team anyways. So the fact that we are getting ready to embark on a five-year rebuild journey with Detroit, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to just continue to have that franchise mode. So very fitting that much like Barry Sanders, much like Calvin Johnson, we decided to retire maybe just a little bit early for the Detroit Lions. So we are actually sitting here right now at week 10, coming off a very nice victory over the Minnesota Vikings where Jared Davis got a player of the week, 15 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, and had a touchdown. We have a very unhappy superstar dev wide receiver. And that is an X-Factor dev wide receiver in Kenny Gall. We have an injury decision. We have contracts. And we're 4-4. Four and four. So before we jump into this year, and this video here is going to be the complete finishing of the 2020 season, I want to just do a quick recap from the first six episodes of our Detroit Lions Madden 21 franchise to get everyone caught up. And then we're going to get into the rebuild. Because when it comes to luxury, it's as much about where it's from as who it's for. Now, we're from America, but this isn't New York City or the Windy City or Sin City. And we're certainly no one's Emerald City. city and this is what we do let's see what kind of moves we can make before the preseason starts and then we'll get into our preseason games all right this actually didn't start out too bad we were able to get josh rosen able to make another move finding a partner for Duran Harmon, man you guys wanted me to move on from we're able to pair him geronimo allison in a six round pick to get blake cashman who's like linebacker five and off the he's had some issues off the field but i think on the field uh, a really solid tight end two option. I think it was tight end two on the Jets. He'll be tight end here too, firmly behind TJ Hawkinson. But I think, and I really did like Chris Herndon when he was coming out of Miami. That was really good value. So able to find someone to take over for Deron Harmon. This is kind of what we were trying to say. If I could get Cashman, who will be our middle linebacker, it kind of frees up to buy. Second year player, foot stretch. That, this is actually a really good trade for both teams. Philadelphia is getting a young middle linebacker that maybe... You know, I can't say the book was written on him in Detroit, but he's just a young player now at a surplus position. And you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, Josh Sweat, this guy's buried on the depth chart there, behind Derek Barnett, behind Brandon Graham. He's, you know, he's just not gonna get the reps he needs, but he's still a young player, promising. I think Tavai's 22, Josh Sweat's 23, very fair trade, and we got help with the defensive end position. Stupid. Oh! Six, let's go, Justin and Coleman. We did absolutely nothing. That was like the longest drive. I'm playing 12 minute quarters. Do not get caught from behind by Cam Newton. There we go. Ooh, Huntley gets the first. Look at the speed, man. Jason Huntley gets in. Oh my God, Jason Huntley is insane. Further ado, let's get into it. Opening week, home opener against the Bears. Bears Lions, one of the better rivalries in the NFL. Let's start 1-0 in this play. And it works! Oh, he gets hit as he throws, but Stafford is as tough as they come in the NFL. Well, definitely one of the toughest quarterbacks. And there we go, DeAndre Swift, a man who 
I guess out of all the high expectations we had for players in the preseason, maybe he was the most underwhelming. And as Stafford gets absolutely popped, I think that was Buster Scrine, DeAndre Swift gets his first NFL touchdown. And the Lions got a lead here over the Bears. And that big bad Bears defense, eh, on that opening drive, I didn't see it. Mm. No, that's terrible. Terrible throw all on me. Should have just, oh, that was, and look, Stafford complaining and not sack. I mean, you're not, terrible throw. Absolute, ter I saw that a mile away. Should have just thrown it away, took the three. Mine. Oh, yes, Jeff Okuda, I told you, you test Jeff Okuda like that too many times, he's gonna make you pay. But I think if you've been watching this, clearly we've been the better team. There's no wind, I'm a little nervous. Come on. It's good. It's good! First win in the books, 34-31. I think we're gonna make Aaron Rodgers look foolish. I think we're gonna win this game. I think we're gonna shock the world and be a 2-0. No! Oh, we go see fish it's a jump. Fucking, oh! It's taking too long, it's taking too long. He throws up a duck and it's one-handed interception behind the head of my running back. And from someone that's unbiased, that usually just has him in fantasy. You do not let that guy... All Madden! All Madden! He literally just did what everyone says is the meme for that dude on ESPN. The former quarterback of Detroit. Remember he ran out the end zone? Fuck off, man. Fuck off. Hey, we got one. Jalen Reeves Maven, linebacker three. Looks like Aaron Rodgers might catch him, but I would hope not. It'd be good to get a pick six for the defense. 30 to 22, we fall the one and one. Contain it, it's gonna happen. But if we could just make it so DeAndre gets 95 yards and a touchdown versus 170 yards and two touchdowns, we know we can score points too. So that's how we're gonna win this game. I think it's gonna be a shootout. Let's go to two and one. Swift is going to one of them. Come on. Mine. Fuck. Every time, man. 50 50, it's going their way. And then Big V just. That's Simmons. Fuck off, man. What the fuck was that? Oh, there we go. A little bit of a... Oh, he can't even... Oh, he did get the touchdown. Nice. Garbage time. It's just, you know, something. Something for all the Lions fans that still haven't turned this game off. Confidence here. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Jimmy Collins, let's go. That's exactly what we needed. Force fumble, sack fumble. Doesn't have enough juice in the legs, but finally the defense gets a turnover. It feels like it's been an eternity since the defense has got to play. Thank you. It's running in. No turnovers. Got to get a point. Got to get points. Emma. Emma. Lock it up nice. There we go. Carry on. Johnson. Not your dad's Detroit where they just throw it 80 times a game. We, get, we do mix in the run here and there because it's so damn effective. Oh, that is a terrific play. Oh, DeAndre Swift. What? That is going to be my favorite play call. No one was marking him. Come on. Sack fumble. Sack fumble. It's got worked. We just got worked. That's what Drew Brees does, man. If there's one thing even old man Drew Brees does, you do not want that guy to have a fourth quarter comeback opportunity. He's going to get it. But good news, if there is a silver lining, we got time. We got time, and their defense has been garbage this second half. Second and nine, couple more yards. Get in a field goal range. That's all I need you to do. Kenny Galladay, get in a field goal range. Oh, what a monster. What a monster. This is going to be it, man. Descend it to overtime. He's yet to miss a kick. It's up. Fucking bullshit. 
but I definitely think now that we're down on all pro and we're able to, even though we still lost on all pro against the Saints, I think all pro Jacksonville, this is a game that I think we can win this one. Just here on our opening drive, and we're gonna fire it in. Oh no! Why am I always throwing so many interceptions? Ah. Oh. Okay, Jamie Collins with an injury. Oh, Blake Cashman's hurt on that play. Awesome. Is that going to go Hawk? Hawk? Yes, DJ Hawkinson. Dude. Dude, this is unbelievable how bad our secondary is. Excuse me? Are you... Mm, slant cheese, yes! Nice, slant cheese. Kenny Galladay, we need that. We absolutely need that. 49 yards, second touchdown of the game. We're going to break records today. They can't stop the run. Untouched, DeAndre Swift. Ooh, give me the pick. A lot of pressure there. Terrible. That's a throw we would make. And we're still just talking. He wants to get in that next tier. Getting the breakout scenario for Kenny Galladay. Now we're going to need a ridiculous game. Atlanta does not have the best secondary. Got him. We got him. Yes, Kenny Galladay. With the arm of Matt Stafford. There we go. That's, I mean, again, it's the, we saw the corners. We did a scouting report. Kenny Galladay should absolutely abuse these corners. Come on, Kenny. Come on, Kenny Galladay. Oh, he's getting X-Factor. Galladay beats his man. Just make this catch. X-Factor. This is just taking them far too long if they really want to have two full possessions without relying on the onside. Either way, we can end the game here right now. Fourth and seven. On Julio Jones. Come on, we run it up. Ah, we can't run it up. Game's over. In our first X-Factor. And it, it, it's easily the guy that deserves the X Factor. And I don't know why I didn't have the X Factor X there. That's going to make me a little bit upset. But Kenny Galladay has done it. And I was, I was not shocked. If there's any player on this offense that I thought would go to X Factor, and like quicker than anyone else, it is gone. Let's see what ability he has. It's grab and smash makes sense. Like I said, I, I was highlighting how much Kenny Galladay is such a violent yards after catch type guy. But either way, there is more than enough talent to cause us some issues here against the Colts. So let's get into it. Here on the opening drive, keep the fans in it. Let's go, Cephas! We need, we need a break even here. Now that's my new goal for this game, is just... Where the ambulance? Where the ambulance? Why the man body still the right man there? Ain't supposed to be laying Call there. the damn ambulance? I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, dead ass. If someone's gonna have to pay for me playing bad, I'm gonna be firing Matt Patricia's ass, because he's already coming in on thin ice. I have zero ties, zero connections for rebuilding the, the horrific reputation Matt Patricia has right now as a head coach. As you can see, we give up two points of overall, but we just... Just can't keep turning the ball over, man. It's absolutely killing this. Oh, Jared Davis. He did something. He just did something. From the doghouse to the penthouse in a matter of a week. Jared Davis. Let's go. Let's draw on the line here on this play. Get home. Jeff Okuda with the pick. Game winning interception, third pick of the year, Jeff Okuda. And hey, we deserve to win. We get the dub game ball. Okay, we are now back. It is time to get into the, even though it's kind of weird to say this is our first new rebuild because I'm going to be unlike any other rebuild because the starting point was a little bit different, but we are here to finish out year one, the 2020 season with the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, again, don't need to do a full recap. You saw all the highlights. When I was making that, my God, I threw a lot. Of, like, almost every game started with, like, a pick six, some form of interception. It's just, it's not great. 
So how these rebuilds are always always gonna work is that, like I said, I want more gameplay. I said I wanna play, try to play four games a year. I don't know, we'll probably take it for this rebuild. Uh, for year one, how it goes, I, you know, I might hop in for one more game, but obviously we already have a lot of gameplay for this season. I, I, let's just see how well they sim it out, man. Let's see how well they play it out. Let's see, let's kind of get a true read on where we're gonna be for this Detroit Lions team. Sitting at four and four, again, we're only a game back. It's not like four and four, oh, great, you know, eight and eight and, all this stuff. Eight and eight might win the NFC North. So we still have plenty to play for here. A very winnable game against Ron Rivera and the three and five Washington Redskins here. But the biggest thing coming in to this title, outside of hey, can we stop throwing interceptions? Is first we have a frustrated receiver in Kenny Galladay, which is absolutely what you don't want to happen when he is the best player, best skill position player, probably best pound for pound player on the team, especially now that he has a superstar X factor. So he wants to get more involved in offense. Absolutely need to get him involved, especially against a lackluster secondary, which the Washington Redskins... So why did I say that? The lack secondary that the Washington football team has. I mean, Washington football team, great defensive line. They're probably going to cause us some issues. Could stifle the run game. Might not have the biggest game from Carry on Johnson or DeAndre Swift, but this should definitely be a game that Matt Stafford lets it hang out and uses Kenny Galladay. So we have an injury decision here. Jamie Collins is coming back. Uh, as you can see, not quite ready. Given, uh, you know, if this was a, an absolute must-win game, we might be on the fence about, you know, hey, let him go out there. If he's ready to play, if he can dress up, battle it. But for right now, uh, I think it's probably best to just keep Chris Christian Jones in the lineup and trust these guys to go out there and get it done against Washington. So to revisit here, just because it's a little bit different, slightly a little bit different approach than how we were, you know, doing this as our main Madden franchise, uh, things definitely open up now for re-signing these players, older players, trying to win now. Uh, so looking at our roster here, obviously, Marvin Jones Jr., this is a rebuild now. This is not, we're playing every single game, we need the best players out there every single game. I, I still think there is plenty of question whether or not Marvin Jones is going to be worth an extension here for Detroit. Because if we suck this year, I, I can't guarantee that Matt Patricia is going to be our coach. We could be getting ready for a big rebuild here in Detroit. And having a 31, he'll be 31 50 some million dollar cap hit wide receiver who who knows how bad he's gonna regress this offseason. I'm gonna say at least probably minus two. I'd be shocked if Barry Jones is 85 plus at the end of the season. So it's still a, a contract that we need to we need to really evaluate. Same with Jared Davis, man. Jared Davis did have a big play, but yeah, I still want to see maybe a little bit more before just handing out a 14 million dollar contract. One guy for sure that's getting a contract is Jalen Reeves Maben. Uh, this is obviously a big time benefit of being able to hop in and play games versus still just doing, you know, the old style rebuilds. Because we did the old style rebuilds, Re Reeves Maven would be deaf guy. He wouldn't be anywhere near on our radar. But the fact that we have been able and played six games so far, we've seen that Reeves Maven is actually really, really legit. And that is a very affordable contract for a player for every, you know, for every, if we're being completely honest, he's a 67 and Jared Davis 74. You could easily put those ratings around given how well, uh, each has kind of played and how bad Jared Davis has really been, especially in coverage. So as I look at these free agents right now, Reese Maven is the only guy for sure that I'm going to resign. I'm very interested in Taekwon Lewis. I like his skill set. Uh, I also think, um, yeah, that's, that's all I can really comment right now. Because Mike Ford, you got Jared Davis, Bo Scarborough, definitely not Amendola because this is a rebuild. We don't want to go that crazy with veterans, but I still think it's best to see what can Marvin Jones do, especially now that there's going to be a lot more sim games. You know, there's just too many mouths to feed when we're actually hopping in with Stafford. But in the sim, Marvin Jones might be able to just take his game to another level and be completely deserving of a contract extension before this year is done. But that being said, guys, let's get into this Redskins game and see if we can go a game above 500. Very impressive victory, 27 to 12. Kenny Galladay, is he happy? Please say yes, it is. He's actually happy nice that is good good morale for your best player is always a good thing five and four we're going up jamie collins is back from injury good to know i think that was blake cashman an update for him he is back from injury even though reese maven has been very good um i honestly think we need to do this we need to take reese maven and he has to get the start over jared davis i absolutely think that is our best three for our linebacking core, but that's a huge victory. 27 to 12. Might as well see just really the box score there, how that game came to fruition. 
And uh, we moved the ball well, almost you know, 350 total yards there, almost 100 yards on the ground. Matt Stafford protected the football, 250 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions on the game. Run attack was not really there. DeAndre Swift, probably the best rookie, I think, in my biased opinion in the NFL right now, getting a touchdown, 85 yards. Kenny Galladay, 65, two touchdowns. He's happy. Still not quite seeing that boom performance out of Marvin Jones Jr. Seven tackles there for Trufant. Bunch of TFLs, run defense came to play. We got a sack for Trey Flowers. No turnovers, but a game that we should win, we did win, and I'm happy with that. So I definitely want to extend Jalen Reese maven He only was looking for a two-year. I think I want to give him a three. I want to give this guy an honest chance to develop in our system, and we got that locked up. I also think Tyquan Lewis is a very nice rotational D tackle, DN hybrid. Good for this multiple front scheme fit again. What happens with Patricia could could make things a little bit more awkward, but I think he's worth this contract extension if he'll take it. It's not anything ridiculous. We got him locked up. So I really don't think I'm missing the mark on any of these other players. Jared Davis, I mean, eh, where's he at this year statistically? He had that one big sack fumble or picked up the fumble recovery. I, just, I mean, it's not bad. 38 tackles, five TFLs on a sack so far, five pass deflections, but we just know he's a liability. And that's actually not... Uh, a super affordable deal. What's that? Almost $4 million cap hit? Yeah. I'd rather go Maven, to be completely honest with you. So, we also, at this point in time, before this matchup against the Carolina Panthers, we have 2,400 XP to spend for Matt Patricia. As long as he is our coach, you might as well keep on with that. And weekly goal XP is always the first thing you should unlock with your scouting. So, let's go. The 8-2 Carolina Panthers, a team that a lot of people will thought would be tanking for Trevor is actually one of the best in football. It's going to be a tough one. Tough loss. It's a tough loss here against Carolina. 21-18 offense. I mean, the passing offense wasn't there, especially given the fact they have Dante Jackson. That's about it in the secondary. I thought we would have picked on them just a little bit. Neither quarterback really had a stellar performance. Uh, they did Even McCaffrey. We, we held McCaffrey in check. Same yards per carry for on Johnson, but they got two touchdowns there from Mike Davis. DeAndre Swift continues his run on rushing touchdowns here. Uh, Amendola as our leading receiver is certainly less than ideal defensively big game for Blake Cashman back in rotation and he comes up with 11 tackles three TFLs make me feel better by the game now that he's back and healthy that we made that trade with the Jets uh, two sacks Brian Burns offensive line struggled a little bit Derek Brown get involved it's that was an ugly game definitely nothing to really write home about unfortunate it's unfortunate because now we fall back to five and five 500 record, I, I, I kind of just feel like that's what we are. We're a 500 team, and that's a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. We do have a point here to spend for Kenny Galladay. Take him up to a base of a 90. He should go up and get uh, another ability, I believe. That's how it would work, deep and elite. I don't know, actually, with abilities, if you you get that ability. You must have already got it. Get that ability when you your morale takes you above those thresholds. He must have already done that. So we're 5-5. Five and five. Uh, and we got a team that's very talented, especially on the offensive side of the ball, Deshaun Watson and the 2-8 Texas. I don't know if they've had injuries. I Let's see what the OC is saying here. Uh, Going to have to get a full game plan. Do we want to run? Oh, absolutely uh, emphasize preparation over rest. We have, it's a 2-8 and eight Houston team that is going to be an all-out desperation mode. So the morale didn't work, but we got some XP. Matt Patricia is ghosting right now. This has to be a win. This absolutely has to be a win when the Houston Texans are struggling that bad. And it is! And we put up points! 37 to 31. We maintain the fact that, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go on a slide here. Houston, it's a shootout. 555 yards of offense for the Detroit Lions here. I mean, not a I mean, one touchdown, one pick for Stafford. At least we're not seeing four or five you know, interception games, which is good. Uh, we had 100 yards of carry on Johnson, 60 and three rushing touchdowns for DeAndre Swift. Rushing touchdown for Matt Stafford, uh, 91. Hey, there we go. Build on this, Marvin Jones. You want that a contract extension? Build on this. Nine catches, 91 yards, and a touchdown. Amendola was solid. Galladay, kind of weird seeing Kenny Galladay really be the third option there. I guess Bradley Roby, underrated corner for the Houston Texans, might have had a day there. 51 yards for DeAndre Swift. I mean, Swift is so good. Justin Coleman had nine tackles and a TFL. Two TFLs there to Sean Hand. Cashman still looking hot. Trey Flowers with a sack. I mean, I'd like to see an interception here or there. It's been a little bit of a quiet stretch for Jeff Okuda and company, but I am happy with that. 555 yards of offense for the Lions. 
So for our remaining schedule here, I do want to play one of these games, and I have to kind of weigh which one, because obviously with three divisional games, we got the Bears Week 13, the Packers Week 14, and the Vikings Week 17. I want to play one of those. I feel like the Week 17 Vikings game, they are last place in the North. That should be a game that we need to win. We can't lose. Obviously, that Green Bay game Week 14 is going to be very important. But I feel like there's a certain... I don't really want to mess with <laughs> That Green Bay game that we played, I threw so many interceptions. I feel like that could be the case, and we might have a better shot if the Sim handles that one, win or lose. But our week one opener was against the Bears, and we played pretty damn well, especially running the ball. So I feel a lot more comfortable actually hopping in on the sticks for this week 13 game against the Bears. It's huge. It's for really second place in the North. Uh, and if we win, Green Bay loses, whatever happens, there could potentially be a first spot up for grabs here for the Detroit Lions if we can handle business and sweep the Chicago Bears, and maybe a little bit revenge because I'm recording this on Monday right after the epic and unfortunate loss for the Detroit Lions against Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, was, there's was a lot of things that went wrong in that game. Ultimately, DeAndre Swift, brutal, brutal drop. Absolute brutal drop. Thankfully, he's, you know, hey, if, there's any, if there's anything that can correlate between Madden and real life, hopefully DeAndre Swift picks it up for the rest of the season and plays like the best damn rookie in the NFL but either way, this is absolutely a game I want to hop in and play. Six and five against five and six. What's our injury report looking like? We've been healthy, man. Cornell, the rookie's only guy that's still banged up. I right, so can I look at the other team's injury reports here? Like Chicago, what's Chicago dealing with? What are they? Who are they missing? The Chicago Bears. It's just already oh, so just death corner. So they're it's, hey full strength against full strength. Wouldn't have it any other way. Let's go big time. NFC North matchup. Oh, let's get after it again. How have we missed Jamie Collins being that hybrid linebacker edge rusher who's up for what, four weeks, five weeks? Good to have him back. Just don't touch the ref and get ejected, please. All right, first pass attempt in about, I haven't played bad in like four days. Oh, we got Galladay. And he almost caused an interception. Blitz. Okay, bad. Oh, there we go. There's a nice play for Tracy Walker. That is going to be close. Fourth and inches. Very nice. Home no field goal attempt. Bears kickers suck. Bears kickers suck. Gonna miss it. Eddie Pinier, as much as I pays me to say, you gotta miss it. And Bears kickers still suck. Oh, that is an excellent play call. Run behind your blockers, carry on. And, ooh, I, credit where credit is due. The reach out animation in Madden 21, it's pretty awesome. Very close first and goal, great play. Great execution. They did not see that coming. We go screen, look, they sold out to stop DeAndre Swift because that is our primary screen back. And we go, oh, carry on Johnson. Not a bad catching back either. We go on the one. And the he's a vulture. We probably actually should have gave that to carry on Johnson, but DeAndre Swift is in for the fourth touchdown of the game. 10 zip Lions. And very much like the first game, Bears run defense is horrible. And I guess in terms of real rosters, I was thinking about finding a way to put Adrian Peterson on the Lions. He actually led the Lions in carrying yards, I think, in everything. Most most rushing categories in week one in real life. But doesn't make sense. With how good DeAndre Swift and carry on Johnson is to like find a way to force AP on the team? Probably not. Don't think so. Don't think so there, Mr. Biscuit. Wow. All right, they're going for it on fourth down in the second quarter on our 41. Oh, that is not good. Jeff Okuda, finger wag time. Big time PBU turnover on downs. All right, we got the Bears in their best scoring position. Our offense kind of fell flat on a couple drives back-to-back. -back. Bears on our eight, third and goal. Trubisky has not played well when we, we've got him under pressure. We've got him on the move. And Justin Coleman diving interception because Mitchell Trubisky is not good. Oh, go, 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 go. Go! Why are you not faster? Oh, that's a huge play, though. I love DeAndre Swift. He might be my first Madden 21 player crush. Or is that Jason Huntley? Will that still be Jason Huntley? I don't know, but I love me some DeAndre Swift right now. First to go on the five. Need to get, almost 
Need to get a touchdown here. We go back to TJ Hawk, a big 78 inch Hawk on him. Think about it. Do the math. He's a beast. No, no way. Cashman's fast. Cashman is not that fast. Oh, God damn. Third goal on the five. Running attack has been on point, but a little bit of resistance here from the Bears. Got to go to the air here. And wide open. Why would you not give any safety help on the best wide receiver in the NFL right now? Too easy. Kenny Galladay, six. Oh. Oh, you just got to mix in a little slant cheese here. And again, my God, where was this performance with me? I mean, I just needed that. I need to take the weekend off to hone in on my Madden skills. I haven't even been close to throwing a pick today on the exact same setting as sliders. I've been pick happy the whole series for the Detroit Lions. Let's see. Can the Bears have any self-respect as a run defense here? Or absolutely not. Carry on Johnson finally gets his first touchdown of the day. Over 100 yards for both of our running backs. I mean, they didn't change their game plan from week one. We didn't change our game plan from week one, and it's working out well for the Lions. And that was as good of a performance as you could get, as good of a performance as we've had at any game so far for Detroit. 42 to 10. Uh, maybe they want to go back to Nick Foles. Trubisky was not really that great, especially when, you, when you're throwing it 38 times with Trubisky, you got to have a bad time. But very efficient with Stafford. Maybe the most impressive thing about this game, even more so than a rushing attack, was no interceptions. Protected the football. Might be his best game all year. But look at that, man. When you average over six yards per total, that's, that's, like, that's like Alabama versus FCS team level of run defense from the Chicago Bears. 135 yards, touchdown DeAndre Swift. 128, touchdown carry on Johnson. And we're able to kill the clock off. There was just no chance for deep. We, we absolutely suffocated the Chicago Bears. They were gassed. Uh, Big Hawk, 37 yards and a touchdown, 80 and 2 for Kenny Galladay, 75 yards for DeAndre Swift. So there we go. We got over 200 yards from scrimmage for the rookie second round pick out of Georgia. Doesn't get much better than that. Desmond Trufant was benched. I don't know if that's going to continue, but it might. Uh, we got three sacks on the day from Jamie Collins, a sack from Trey Flowers, the diving interception, highlight reel pick from Justin Coleman in the end zone. As good a performance as you can get for Detroit, as this is going to be our last gameplay. Hopefully this team can take this momentum and really close the season out strong in the sim. The biggest game on slate for week 14 is none other than Green Bay and Detroit. The 8-4 Packers able to maintain that one game last week. They won week 13. We won week 13. I guarantee they didn't win as impressive as we did. So the NFC North is on the line. Let's bring it live, man. Both teams are healthy. I checked the injury reports. So what team wants it more? Week 14, the Detroit Lions. Ugh. 21-13, we fall. Low-scoring game. The fact that we only got 13 points, given the fact that we've 37 and 42 the, the two previous weeks, it was great. I mean, you got to give kudos up to the Green Bay Packer defense here. Matt Stafford had an interception. Uh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers didn't take the game over by any means, but that could have been a costly pick, especially in a low-scoring game. Neither run offense, I mean, again, night and day for how well we were running the ball against the Chicago Bears to literally they cut it in half. We're averaging over six yards per carry. Obviously, that's not maintainable, but that is just day and night. Literally, as day and night as you can get. Another strong game from Ravon Jones. Eight catches, 72 yards. Um, DeAndre Swift continues his touchdown streak. Like, I want you to wonder how long. he's. It feels like almost every game of the season, he's caught a touchdown or got, ran for a touchdown. Defensively, uh, Josh Sweat, three TFLs. No one had a real dominant game. I guess it's Darius Smith getting a sack and a pick. Could get the game ball there for the Green Bay Packers. But that is, uh, you know, held, you know, zero points in the first half. And a costly interception, I guess. The turnover could be the big deciding factor there. That is a, that's a brutal loss. That's a brutal loss given all the momentum we had going into that game. Also from that, oh, he's hurt again. Blake Cashman has just been unable to stay healthy. Kind of, obviously, in retrospect, maybe not worth the trade. I mean, he's been on the field. He's been outstanding. He's missed, like, I would say he has 68 tackles, 8 TFLs, and a sack in, like, 8 games. Like, he's been very, very good when he's on the field, but your best ability is availability, as cliche as that sounds, as we gear up here for a big game against the 5-8 and eight Tennessee Titans. Probably a game on paper, not as strong, 
but that is a very strong performance. 24-17. We knock off the, you know, that's, again, I think that's absolutely a game that you'd probably say Tennessee should win. 449 yards of offense. Stafford on point. Outdueling Riley Tannehill. Look at that. 350 yards, three touchdowns. No picks from Matt Stafford. Rushing attack, not unreal, but good enough. Uh, Hawkinson, 95 yards and a touchdown. Galladay, 72 yards and a touchdown. Oh, the touchdown streak ends for DeAndre Swift. I like seeing Carryon Johnson, though, get on the score sheet. On the defensive side, seven tackles, Jared Davis. We had one lone sack in the game from Trey Flowers, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Aquara getting a TFL. No picks, but that is a professional victory for Detroit to keep our playoff hopes alive. Week 16, maybe we have an advantage. Matt Patricia trying to stop Tom Brady. Very underperforming Bucks. So they, they could steal one away. We are very much in the playoff line. Tampa, maybe the biggest underperformers. This got to be a win. Professional win. And Patricia's defense falls flat. More valid skepticism about Matt Patricia as a head coach. What is he bringing to this defense to lose 35-24 in a game that you absolutely need to pull through on? Giving up almost 450 yards. Yeah, we know they were explosive. Godwin, Brady, all those guys. That's just, just had, gave Tom Brady probably his best game as a Buccaneer. Running the ball was not great. Huntley had a touchdown. I like seeing that. Godwin. And, I mean, see, I like seeing Seifers get touched. But Gronk ate us up. Godwin ate us up. Did okay against Mike Evans. We'll be interested to know if that was maybe Okuda locking up Mike Evans. We'll get. We'll be positive and try to find a positive and say, yeah, Jeff Okuda did an okay job against Mike Evans. DeAndre Swift gets another touchdown, but uh, not good enough, man. Reeves Maben had a good game. Shaq Barrett got two sacks on our ass. I guess no picks for Stafford. Stafford's still playing very well. And we got a chance to, a very winnable game against the last place Minnesota Vikings in our division to give us as good a chance as possible to make the playoffs. Squeeze in in that wild card. And the final game of the season, glimmer of hope at making the playoffs. We got a 5-10 and 10 Vikings on the slate. We know they're talented. We know they're probably better than 5-10. and 10. Looking at the standings, you could just see, okay, that's ridiculous, like Carolina, 13-2. But looking at the NFC, we're still there. We are right on the cusp for the wild card. It's going to go to the Giants, Packers. It's going to take nine wins, at minimum nine wins, to get into the wild card. Seattle's there as well. So it's really Seattle, Detroit, Green Bay, and the New York Giants. Two of those teams are going to get in the wild card. Um, I don't know what that. I, mean, I don't want to really. We can't control. We can't control. It's no, no, no need even previewing who the who the Giants, who the Packers, who the Seahawks are playing because we got to handle business. If we can't beat a five and ten Vikings team, doesn't matter. Absolutely does not matter. Fingers crossed, we get a chance. Nine and seven. It's not a good one. Oh. Thinking that. It's getting a little bit shorter there for Matt Patricia. Our, our tolerance of these. Not getting results, man. Not getting results. Who got in? On the final day, the Giants won. Everyone, everyone won except us. That's like rubbing salt in the wounds. Year one ends with no playoffs. I mean, not, I'm not going to say it's shocking at all that we did not make the playoffs. But it doesn't make it any less frustrating. Um... Okay, where do we go from here? Well, it's time to kind of season recap, at least focusing here on our Detroit Lions. The good was offensively we were strong, and defensively uh, we saw some promise, but I think ultimately what let us down was our defense. Our defense, that is supposed to be the specialty of Matt Patricia, has definitely been underperforming. Looking at our stats here, we were the number one offense in the NFL. Defensively, 31st. I'm going to say right now that Matt Patricia, we'll give him one more year. I think we'll give Patricia one more season because we saw the improvement on offense. We saw what a healthy Matt Stafford can do. You can get 16 games on Matt Stafford, he can air it out. We saw the running attack. A little bit of a change in culture there. Got to give credit where credit is due. Matt Patricia, Belichick way, running back by committee, carry on Johnson, DeAndre Swift, very good, very dangerous. But 31st defense? So. We'll give him one more year. We'll get very, very short leash. Easily will enter the 2021 season with the hottest seat out of any head coach in the NFL. But, I mean, looking at our own team, 
Matt Stafford, what was he, number one in yards? First in the league in yards, with almost just 200 yards shy, 5,000. Very good. 28 touchdowns to 20 picks. At least when all is said and done, the interceptions did not trump the touchdowns. If I was playing the full 16 games, I don't know if I could say that for sure. That's where it would be. But 28 touchdowns, 20 picks. It's not brutal. I think he was 20th in the NFL with 28 touchdowns. I mean, that's not, yeah, it's not brutal. It's definitely not good, though. And how many, you know, the fact that we got half those interceptions in two games, I think. I think you take the Packer game, the first Packer loss, and um, what was the other game we threw a lot of picks on? There was a lot of games we threw a lot of picks, but uh, running the ball was very good. Very happy with this. Almost 1,100 yards from Carryon Johnson, nine touchdowns. We got almost 800 yards and 13 touchdowns for the rookie DeAndre Swift. Very, very happy with that. I guess just, you know, just how it is about, you know, you, when you're buried that far in the depth chart, uh, Huntley didn't really have much of an opportunity to shine, even though he looked like he was going to be unreal from the preseason. But still, you cannot, you know, the best one-two punch in the NFL, you would say, especially entering 2021. Receiving huge year from Kenny Galladay, averaging 90 yards a game, 79 catches, 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. Nice year for Hawkinson as well. 73 catches, 800 yards, five tutties for the big old Hawk. Got almost 800 yards and five touchdowns for Dodgers. Swift. Got to be offensive rookie of the year, right? Seven and none for Amendola. Seven and one for Marvin Jones. Who I just think at this point in time, I, I we can't extend him, man. I, I we got to put that money elsewhere. It's not like we are blessed with infinite dollars of the salary cap. It's not even blessed with like a great salary cap situation. I would say generally Detroit is below average in the salary cap. So we just I, I can't reward Marvin Jones with fifty million dollars with only seven hundred yards on the season. Uh, blocking, Ragnar was solid, only giving up two sacks, or one sack, two sacks, Crosby was fine, Big V, six sacks, could be worse, Decker getting 12s, not ideal, considering we extended him, defensively, Jalen Rees, maybe, led the team, I mean, definitely one of the better success stories, and, and kind of grows to show you what we're going to be able to do here in these new refills, is have success stories like Jalen Rees, maybe, 101 tackles, four TFLs, two sacks, two picks, got his chance due to an injury, and, and really just re-aggravated injuries to Blake Cashman. He made the most of it, man. Got himself a new contract. We might have a very underrated linebacker for the rest of these four years here with Detroit. Trufant, even though 95 tackles, yeah. He gave up 95 tackles because he gave up 95 goddamn catches, it felt like. Even though it said he only gave up 10, there's no way. Gave up way more than that. Uh, on the sacks and TFLs, 12 TFLs, 11 sacks from Trey Flowers. That's, I think, statistically the best he's ever had. So he's thriving. Which is good. Yeah, definitely his strongest season he's ever had in the NFL. And he's paid to do so, man. Honestly, had to take his game to the next level. We'll get six sackles. Uh, sackles? Let's go with that. Six sacks, nine tackles for loss for Jamie Collins. 15 TFLs, three and a half sacks Josh Sweat. 13 TFLs, three sacks for Deshaun Hand in his first full year as a D tackle. I think that was a success story. I think Josh Sweat, given what we gave from him to, like, what did, uh, what do you call it, dude? Tavai for the Eagles. He did. I mean, he had a lot. Of, I mean, that's. That's not brutal. He's up 74 normal, 100 tackle. I mean, nothing nothing ridiculous, but that's a, that's a strong year. I don't think I could say either way who uh, who really won that trade between Joshua. I mean, Joshua's higher overall at this point. I'd say we broke about even. We broke about even on that Tavai for Sweat trade. For the picks, Jeff Okuda, the rookie, leading the team with four. Might also have a defensive rookie of the year on the books for DeAndre Swift on offense. Okuda, four picks. That is really good. Only giving up, I mean, for what it's worth, I feel like this is a glitch stat. But eight tackle, or only giving up eight catches allowed, that's that's pretty damn good. Uh, three picks, Justin Coleman, two from Rees Maven. Definitely want more interceptions, more turnovers would have been nice. But at least Akuda played very well. Kicking game was strong. I think Matt Prater, best kicker, should make the Pro Bowl as a kicker. Fox was okay. Not a lot of gongs, only nine gongs on the year. Need to update that a little bit. But Russell Teams wasn't a worry. Looking at the yearly awards here, MVP went to Aaron Rodgers, 10 and 6. I mean, he was on point. Um, no one even make the short list here. Uh, Coach of the year. Did we get any love there? Absolutely not. So in the NFC, obviously, they went to Drew Brees. Strong season. Nothing for us. Come on. Help us out. Defense play, they went to Bobby Wagner. Did anyone watch our games? We should have some players. Offensive rookie of the year, rightfully so. DeAndre Swift, very nice. Josh Jefferson there, C.D. Lamb. Fullback, sure, have a fullback there, but very happy, rightfully deserved DeAndre Swift, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to, ooh, Derek Brown. You know what? At least it was an actual defensive rookie that won it over 
the uh, the very spry Nigel Bradham, who's not even on the Saints anymore. Where is uh, four picks for Okuda? Only got him at seven. That's a little harsh. Just maybe. Quarterback went to Drew Brees. Matt Stafford coming in at number eight. Running back went to Zeke Elliott. DeAndre Swift at number two. Carry on Johnson at number five. So going forward, I think a lot of people are going to fear offense. Knowing Matt Stafford can do what he can do. And we have easily the best one-two punch in the NFC, at least, at running back. That's kind of scary. Kenny Galladay, number one wide receiver in the NFC. O-lineman, probably won't have anything there. D-lineman, Dominican Sue got the award. Uh, Trey Flowers at number four. Linebacker went to Khalil Mack. I mean, we weren't going to have much there. DB went to Mike Hughes. Jeff Kuda, make, hey, making the shortlist. Good company. Number nine, Jalen Ramsey. Number 10, Jeff Akuda. At least being in that same sentence, that same breath, is something we can build on. Number one kicker, clearly Matt Prater. Very, very good. Essentially automatic. Uh, I'm happy with it, man. I'm happy with the year. All said and done, I did not think when we picked year one with Detroit, we would make the playoffs. And there's a lot of positive. If you throw out me just throwing 4,800 interceptions every game I was playing earlier, uh, we probably make the playoffs. We probably make the playoffs. That's why I'm not going to overreact. And just go full on, hit the panic button, rebuild mode, cut Patricia. I think he's definitely done enough this year. Showed on offense that the changes are happening here in Detroit, but we need to be able to pick it up on the defensive side of the ball. Pro Bowl, some honors going to our Detroit Lions. DeAndre Swift running back two at the Pro Bowl. We have Kenny Galladay, wide receiver one. I, was I thought Hawkson might have a chance at making it there. Uh, Frank Ragnow, backup center. like seeing him getting a little bit of love. He was solid. Trey Flowers is a starting D end. Former Detroit line, Anthony Zettel making the Pro Bowl. Uh, linebacking core, not much. Secondary, ugh, not great. Matt Prater is your starting kick. So a couple guys from Detroit got represented. I like seeing that. So we do have some upgrades that we can throw around. Jeff Akuda for winning Defensive Player of the Year. Gets that little, uh, well, should have, should have been Defensive Player of the Year. Gets a nice little plus one there. He's up to an 81 overall with a superstar dev. Obviously ceiling very, very high. DeAndre Swift, the offensive rookie there, and rightfully so, is going to be hopefully an 81 when all is said and done. I don't know if he went up a dev trade or not. He was sitting at a star. Would be pretty cool. Maybe give us more questions and answers if he goes a superstar. Sticks at star. Uh, I will say what I am doing in these rebuilds too is I'm going to be manually updating the, uh, the dev traits of linemen and tight ends and corners, for an example, if... A line makes the Pro Bowl and still on a normal. They might go up. They might not. It's going to be a little bit of a random generator thing. Same with corners and tight ends. Just so that we can have, you know, some surprise new players that start dominating. Like Aussie Aussie on the Patriots, for example. I had 12 touchdowns this year. That's pretty freaky for a rookie. Like a fourth round rookie. So we're going to, you know, make him maybe a little bit better than, say, what would happen. If we're just going through the motions here with the Sim save. But you guys will see that play out as we go through this save. But let's just get a quick look here at Super Bowl 54. Carolina, who's the number one team in the regular season, Teddy Bridgewater, trying to complete maybe one of the greatest comeback stories in history against the Browns, who actually look like they kind of suck yet again in real life anyways. And wow, touchdown Teddy gets the job done. 27 to 7, what? What, was it Teddy Bridgewater going off? Or that, was that a game that like McCaffrey just took over? And Teddy had a solid game, two touchdowns. I mean, maybe DJ Moore got... Super Bowl MVP. Derek Brown, the defensive rookie of the year, had a huge game. Tony Jefferson, Brian Burns getting picks. That is a scary Carolina team. So the first Super Bowl winner in our new rebuilds goes to Carolina. So I, I do want to finish up with free agency here. Like I said, there's no one that I'm... Jared Davis went up dev trait? But why? But Why? I mean, out of principle, he was so not great playing for us. Even though he went up dev trait, that's an unjust dev trait. And Marvin Jones, who we pretty much said he had to play really well. I mean, it's way cheaper to get him now, but he's down to an 82. I actually feel like that's actually not a brutal contract to throw out to Marvin Jones Jr. If he'll take that, I absolutely come back with us. If he doesn't want it, yeah, he's, he's going to want to bounce. He regressed as expected. So let's, uh, let's get through this. Let's get an idea of what free agents are on board. And because of how we're presenting these rebuilds, where it's five separate videos, I get to use you guys' feedback for how we attack free agency in every single year. That's pretty cool, huh? Different? A little bit different? And now that I think about it, just because we have injuries on, 
I mean, Jared Davis is a backup. The fact that he went up, if you'll take this, I, I will keep Jared Davis. And he wants to bounce, so kiss my ass, have fun, get, get whatever team you go to, have fun, have an absolute liability on third downs in coverage. So here's a quick look at free agency. Now, you know, got to temper your expectations. We only have $15 million of available cap, so we can definitely bring someone in, but, you know, you got to have somewhat reasonable expectations here. I mean, at running back, we're fine. I don't even need to look at some of these positions. At wide receiver, I mean, the fact that now it's just Galladay. Marvin Jones is gone. It's annoying that he is actually the top available free agent there. We have done our scouting in the draft. It's a very strong wide receiver class. So you can kind of look at that depth chart. Galladay on the outside. We can go with Cephas as our slot wide receiver. But we need that other outside wide receiver. Should be available in the draft. But, I mean, John Ross is there. He's now a star dev. Probably could squeeze that contract on the books. Demarcus Robinson, I mean, that could be a low risk. Zay Jones is a scheme fit. Put him out on the outside. Definitely not touching Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Perriman could be an affordable option. We could, you know, Josh Gordon is there. The no bids. We might actually be able to lowball him a little bit and throw him on the outside, just even for a year. But knowing that we need outside players, there's not a whole lot here in the draft. Uh, or, sorry, in free agency. We're good at tight end. Offensive line. Uh, Elf line's there. Could get him as one of our guys. He probably would take a lot of our available cap, but that is an upgrade and a nice little band-aid at left guard. We're good at center. I think Crosby was more than sufficient at right guard this season. I think he only gave, what, three sacks? It's not bad. Right tackle, we have Big V's ugly contract on the books. I think this is a definitely a position that we try to improve in the draft. Defensively, I mean, our D-line is solid. I am not really looking at upgrading much on the D-line. Uh, our run defense was very good. Our pass rush was acceptable. So look at more so the linebacker core, Jamie Collins. I mean, unless there was a guy that was really young, that was a scheme fit. I'm not quite seeing that there. Inside, uh, Rees maybe went up dev trade, which makes me feel pretty damn good. Uh, Cashman's still there. In terms of upgrades, we have, uh, oh my God, runner-up for defensive rookie of the year, Nigel Bradham is available. But I, I, again, I feel like linebacker, middle linebacker, not really worried about that. Uh, right outside linebacker, potentially, yeah. Chris Jones, I think another guy that went up a dev trade. Why? Why? Um, knowing me more so pass coverage. I mean, Davis, there's no offer on him if you want to continue that story with Jared Davis here in uh, in Detroit. But I'm thinking right now this might be one of the first premier positions we want to look at the draft. Uh, Nate Gary, ugh, as an Eagle fan, I do not want Nate Gary, even though he's pass coverage. What do we got a left side linebacker pass coverage, guys? Ooh, Kaiser White. I mean, hey, that actually could be an okay sign. Kaiser White converted safety, former safety at West Virginia. I think that actually could be a sneaky, solid signing. That's an upgrade, a three-point upgrade over Chris Joe. I like that bid. You guys can get on board with that, maybe. Uh, Coleman Akuda. I mean, maybe there's value. Tavon Young in the slot. Because, I mean, we we need an outside guy. Akuda's on the outside. Coleman's inside. Trufant's washed. So we need an outside corner. Everyone kind of needs an outside corner. Uh, Awuzie slot. We got just a bunch of slot dudes. Um, maybe another position we need to go. Kevin King with that. Ooh, that's interesting. Scheme fit, outside length, 6'3". Got the dev trait. Very reasonable contract. I'm, I'm thinking just looking at this. I mean, Herndon's not bad either. Scheme fit, man-to-man. -man. I'm thinking we could probably do a lot worse than maybe getting Kaiser White as a depth linebacker and then getting someone like Kevin King, keeping him within the vision, put him on the outside, see what happens. Uh, free safety, I mean, I like Harris as a young option that we can grow and develop. There's not really, it's, it's more so there's not really, we don't have a lot of money, and I, I don't think we need to invest our very low salary cap into a position that we have a young guy that could get better, could get a dev trait in Will Harris, especially now that they're going to be simming a lot more in year two. And then, uh, you know, keep on keeping on with Tracy Walker there. So if I had to come up with a short list, I'm going to say... Let's not overspend, and let's get someone like Kaiser White at outside linebacker, and then maybe consider someone like Kevin King, or if we want to go a little bit cheaper, Trey Herndon had some outside experience with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But let me know how you guys want to approach free agency. I'll be looking through the comments, and uh, that's something that's going to be you know, a little bit different in our rebuilds. A lot of community and viewer input. But that will do it for part one of the Detroit Lions rebuild, realistic rebuild on the channel. Always looking for your guys' feedback. It's going to be a little bit tougher because we did have to incorporate the Detroit Lions series that we already did on the channel. No other team in these rebuilds are going to really start off this way. 
But I uh, hope you guys are feeling it. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Give me your feedback for free agency. Give me your feedback for these rebuilds so far. And we will be back very short. Like I said, man, we got five videos per team. It's going to be coming at you. We're going to be getting through it. So stay tuned to that sub box. Thanks for all the support. Hope you guys are rock with me throughout this little bit of a change on the channel. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching and peace out.